your name, all the glory that's due to you. God, we thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the air that we breathe, Lord. We give you praise because we couldn't even catch our breath that you didn't give it to us. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, that we can breathe in and out. God, you've kept us through sickness and you kept us from danger, seen and unseen. And Father, we just want to say thank you. If it had not been for your love, if it had not been for your grace, where would we be? If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? We surely would have died, and we never could have made it without you. And so, God, we honor you in this place. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is none besides you, none like you. Nobody can impeach you. Nobody can vote you in. Nobody can vote you out. You are absolutely undeniably, undisputably God, and you reign on the throne. And we give your name all the glory. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, put on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are the living word. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter.
save humanity. You're still on the throne. You are the living word. Thank you, Lord. Fresh. 
where am I able to be saved than the name of Jesus? The sweetest name I know. Yeah. It'll mess you up. You don't even, even have to be in church. You can be all by yourself. You can be in your car. You can, yeah. And, and, yeah. But when you call that name, the atmosphere changes. Somebody had to call that name last night. Can I ask you a question? Won't he do it? <laughs> I said, won't he do it? Now, since you came here, I guess you came here to have church. Since you really about to have it. I said, won't he do it? Church is open. Y'all come on back home. Yeah, y'all come on back home. Listen, listen, listen. I ain't gonna wait till third Sunday. The doors of the church is open. Y'all come on back home. Listen. For those who want to come, come on. Come, bro, give me some more of that Jesus. I just want, I just want to have church. Y'all ain't no rushes. Give me some more of that Jesus. Y'all got feet. Let's stand on your feet. And if you watch it and you want to come on in, Come on, come on in. We got room. Come on, man. We gonna have a choir. Come on. Man, this how you rock. This way. Come on, come on. Stand and show them how to rock. Sean Johnson, we've yeah. been praying for you, brother. Amen. We 
and picked up some weight. <laughs> You've been the same weight all my life. It got big now. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Some of my seasoned senior saints, I haven't seen you. God bless you. Good to see you. To some of our visitors that are here, to those who are in virtual land, it's just good to be in worship. Yeah, it's good to be in worship. Did I tell you I was good to be in worship? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember a time, and I'm talking like I'm 90 years old, but I remember, you know, when I first started this journey, and this church was, it was on top of one another. I used to always think, Lord, I don't know what I'll do if I had to preach to some pews. The Lord showed me what I'm gonna do. He said, you're gonna preach like you preach to some poor people. <laughs> Computer. Well, it's good to see you in the house today. Uh, Y'all come back next week. Amen. Y'all want to come back? Come on back next week. We'll be here at 1130. Sister Brady, come on. Okay. Get back in motion. Okay. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. All right. You got your seat? Got it. Okay. <laughs> now, I know some of y'all pews has been taped yeah. off. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pastor, my pew got tape on it. We can't sit on on my view. <laughs> we'll alternate them each Sunday. That's what we do. Good to see you all. God bless you. It's just good to be here. Be in worship and be a part of the fellowship. You don't know how much you miss the fellowship until you don't have a fellowship. Amen. 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 I think these brothers up here are happy too. They didn't play and song and beat on the drum. They didn't get happy too. Yeah. Amen. Let's see here. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you now for our time together. Lord, as we open up the word, speak to us. <clears throat> we need to hear from you, Lord. And only you. Lord, we can't make it on this journey without you. Feed us, feed us, Lord. Feed us, feed us, feed us, feed us. Feed us from on high. Lord, we avail ourselves to be used by you and you alone. Give us what we need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Gospel John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. Gospel John chapter 2, verses 23 through 20. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. <clears throat> but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. When he's for subject of preaching, the Lord knows my heart. Amen. The Lord knows my heart. As we wrap up this chapter two, of this series of preaching from the Gospel of John and we have done well to move in a steady pace. Amen. The Lord knows my heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. The occasion was the Passover. Jesus is in Jerusalem. It is at this moment that he publicly presents himself as the na to the nation as the Messiah. It's at this moment at the Passover, while people are gathering to celebrate the deliverance out of Egypt, the Lord keeping them in the wilderness where they have taken the lamb, put blood over the doorpost, 
while they're there commemorating and celebrating God's deliverance, this is the time that Christ publicly presents himself as the Messiah. There are many claims to those who mention to be the Messiah who have said they were the Messiah. But Christ has now gone publicly with one act of cleaning up the temple, which Reverend Keeley so sufficiently dealt with on last Sunday. Praise God for you, brother. That when cleaning the temple, the Jews asked a question. The question is found in verse 18. I'm sorry. It was found in earlier in the text <clears throat> when Jesus asked a question. And so when he told them that he had tear the temple down and in three days raised it up, the Jews wanted to know how could it be that it's taken 46 years for this temple to be built. Mm -hmm. The temple of Zerubbabel, the temple that was built after the exiles had came out of captivity, they had built this temple. And now Christ is going to suggest that he's gonna tear it down and in three days, he's going to raise it up. Well, after him publicly presenting himself as the Messiah, after doing many miracles, the attention now is on Jesus Christ. He has captivated the minds of individuals. For those who are Jews, they seek a sign. For those of the Greek equation, they seek human wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. And in doing so, these signs were important. These signs were important because there is a group called the Sanhedrin who is responsible for recognizing and affirming and confirming who the Messiah is. And while these signs are getting the attention of many, there are those who came to a place of belief in his name. That's what the text tells us. That Jesus, while here, he has performed a many of miraculous signs and that when people saw them, they believed in his name. Now, the details of these signs are not um, talked about in this particular passage of scripture, nor is it dealt with what particular signs he had done while he was at the Passover, but we do know that these signs arrested the minds of individuals. All right. All right. And in doing so, they believed because of the sign, right, right. because of the miraculous. Well, what about what happened with his birth, because his birth was a sign. Come on, Dick Lester. You know where we at. His birth was a, a sign. The announcement was a sign. Everything about how he was incarnated was a sign. That he shouldn't have to do any abracadabra. He shouldn't have to do any type of miraculous things and changing this and doing this, but just his life entail was a sign. Amen. But but these signs were needed. These signs were needed. But the text said that many, many believed when they saw the signs which he did. But the word has gotten around. Word is around town that there's a, a man around the Passover that he is doing these signs and his claim to be the Messiah. Well, that, that's, that's an issue now because now we see in this text that they believed when they saw the signs. They didn't believe upon his words, but they believed upon the signs. So in other words, if he had done no signs, there would be no belief. And so these individuals were, were drawn 
by the signs. Can I suggest to you that there are some of us in here, there are some of us in virtual land who have been drawn by the signs, but yet the Lord has, the Lord knows our heart, and because he knows our heart, he knows how invested we are in him. Okay, listen to the text. Watch the text now. It says, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. Verse 24, but Jesus did not commit himself to them. Comma, pause, slow down, stop right there. But Jesus did not commit himself to them. Some of your Bibles say in trust. This is the same word that is used in the Greek for the word belief, pastuio. And when we see this word, Jesus did not commit. He did not entrust. He did not entrust himself into their faith. Because their faith was based off what they had saw with their eyes and not what they had heard with their ears. And there are many of us who are claiming to have belief, but we're all here because of the signs. Because we're here for the signs. The Lord knows our heart. The Lord knows our heart is a, is a phrase that I've been hearing for years around these walls. Even as a kid, when somebody would use the Lord knows my heart is an excuse to cut somebody out, to go off on somebody. We use the Lord knows my heart. We want to tell Sister Jackson a piece of our minds. And when we want to tell uh, Brother Johnson a piece of our mind, we use the phrase the Lord knows my heart. When we want to act the fool and be ignorant in church, we use this phrase, the Lord knows my heart. Not understanding that the Lord truly knows your heart and he truly knows what you are about. And the text says that because he knew the heart of men, he could not entrust himself. He could not commit himself to them. Can I ask you a question? Can the Lord commit himself to you? If the Lord does a heart check with your heart, can he entrust and commit himself to you that you are fully believed in who he is and you're not worried about the signs? Listen, when I was a child, I needed the sign. When I was, uh, when I said child, I mean a child in Christ. I needed the signs. But when I became a true believer, I don't need the signs. Listen, I just saw us call his name and the atmosphere. I don't need no signs. I know that at the mention of his name, things can change. I know that when I talk to him in prayer, I'm going to get some results. I don't need the signs. If he never changes water to wine, I don't need the signs. If he never raises Lazarus up, I don't need the signs. Some of us are here because of the signs. We got to move past the signs and look at the source. Y'all remember when I preached the water and wine a few weeks ago? Look at the source. So he, he does not commit or entrust himself because he knows their heart. And, and they're, they're only hanging around because he can do some stuff. Later on, later on, when we go through this gospel, we're going to see a multitude be fed. And, and he's going to take the minimal of this bread, and this fish. He's going to bless, he's going to break, and he's going to pass. Mm -hmm. and, and the thousands will be fed, and that sign signifies that he is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. But those who partake of it and saw it, mm -hmm. they sought to exalt him as king because he took care of a temporary need. Yeah. Yeah. I don't just want him to feed me on one day, yeah. but I want the bread from heaven yeah. that'll feed me till I want no more. A temporary feeding, and now they were to make him king. Well, they were looking at the sign. He said he would not commit himself or entrust himself because he knew the heart of man. Yeah, that's what text said. The Bible said. Bible said that because he knew all men. This word knew. Ganoskis means that he had knowledge of. How could he have knowledge of? Because he's omniscient. Further, further sign for us to see who he is. God in the flesh 
And he knows our heart. Yeah. Sometimes we put on fronts and facades for those individuals that are working around us in the church, those, those who, uh, who are with us, and those uh, we put on these. But these fronts and facades don't matter because the Lord knows my heart. You ain't fooled nobody because you got up this morning and came in here and some of us going to leave out here just as ignorant and stupid as we did when we came in here because the Lord knows our heart. Do you know this? Because the Lord knows your heart, there are some things that he has kept from you. <laughs> the Lord knows that I can't get there and he ain't ready for it. Okay, so, so, these individuals, Christ has done these miraculous signs. He's got the attention of the Jews in this particular text. They're asking questions because he is talking language that they're not understanding of how he's going to turn down the temple and they've been built for 46 years and he's going to raise it up in three days not understanding that this was further proof of the sign to come in his resurrection. Here it is. Individuals are drawn by signs. Can I ask you, what drew you to Jesus? I just asked you a question. What drew you to Jesus? Was it because everybody was going to church and your mama said you got to get up and go to church? Was it because that was genuine relationship? What, what was it that, that drew you Okay, I, I got it, I got it. Maybe it was that time he was going through. You say, Lord, if you, did what Kelly said this last week, Lord, if you get me out of this one. And when the Lord got you out, you showed up for a couple weeks. I'm going to join the mission. I'm going to join the mission. I'm going to be a sister Darlene, and we're going to give our fruitcakes. I'm going to be on the lesson board. I'm going to give our programs. And then that lasts for a little while. Not knowing the Lord knows your heart. Yeah. And one, one of the funny things that, that, that I enjoy is that when I get those phone calls from individuals who kind of been out of the fellowship for a while, and, and when they've been out of the fellowship for a while, something that happened in their life, and they have a life altering, um, changing event, and then they run up in here, and pass them, and the Lord did this, and I'm here, and I'm back, and I'm doing that, and, 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 and I'm looking at them like, stop lying, the Lord knows your heart. <laughs> When everything died down, then you went up in here testing line. But the Lord knows our heart. He knows our deeds. He knows every aspect of us. And, and, and can I just share this with us, with all of us today? And then including for me as a preacher, this pandemic has revealed our hearts. Listen, I just told Deacon Ross, just ask him a question, Ruth, and that is, this is ground zero. And I was asking him, if I asked you to join a church again, would you do it? Because now, this is a whole new church. Yes, it is. This is a whole new church because the pandemic has revealed who's really in and who's really not. And I'm not worried about who's out. God bless their hearts. But the ones who have remained are the ones I need to shepherd. Amen. I love the ones that are going on, but God bless you. But for those who want to be connected to the fellowship, I'm all for it. It's been over a year now. There's no excuse of why you are not connected to the fellowship. You should have called to find out something. There's no excuse why somebody's not part of the fellowship. Amen. Virtual worship is going on in all aspects. Amen. Well, because the Lord knows your heart, we find excuses not to show up to work when the Lord is calling for us to work. Everything is important. Everything has to go on first. But reminding yourself of what you signed up for when you confess the hope in Christ. Mm, we got to remember what we signed up for. We signed up for service. If any man Desire to come after me, 
let him first deny himself. That's called sacrifice. Yeah. To deny yourself is to sacrifice. And not only, not only uh, deny yourself, let him deny himself, take up his cross. That suggests that some suffering comes along with the process that we all have a cross to bear. Your cross is not my cross, and my cross is not your cross. And then he said, follow me. And while you follow me on the road, there's going to be some ups and downs, but I'm going to be with you. We have forgotten there is a cost of following Jesus. But because he knows our hearts. So what happens when the organ breaks? Can we still lift up holy hands? What happens if the drum get a hole in it? Can we still clap our hands and stuff our feet? What happens when the microphone goes out? Can we still raise our voice and say hallelujah? What happens if the building floods and is shut down, burned down? Will we cease to exist? Listen, you all, we're in a traumatic stage in our life. And the Lord is searching our hearts and purging us. He's really, okay, maybe this ain't you, but this pandemic has been for my good. Oh, the spiritual growth that the Lord is working on me in the midst of a pandemic. I can truly say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I can truly say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and mean it at this moment. It ain't no longer lip service. It ain't no longer an act. But it's truly worship because the Lord is purging and grooming my heart. That song um, Yvette Brennigan used to sing it. He's preparing me. And you ought to ask yourself, is he preparing you? Yeah, he's preparing me. Yeah, a year ago, yeah, there's some growth. Yeah, no, well, you know what? One of the best things that ever happened to us, and thank God for those few people, is Bible study every day. Oh! Been in that word every day has been a blessing to me. I don't know if it was for y'all, but there's been times I had to hang up the phone and go and shout more all by myself. I didn't tow the floors up in my apartment, walking back and forth, because when that word gets in you, and when you get in that word, it'll do something to your heart. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord knows your heart. But listen, watch the text. He said he had no need. Ooh. And get happy. I had some notes. I don't know what happened to you. He said, uh, yeah, no one knows the heart of man like the Lord. Watch, watch this verse. Oh, I had one point. I forgot to get out that one point. That is, the Lord is looking for authentic relationships. Not just somebody who's looking for the stuff. If you're looking for the stuff, you need to know this, that he's looking for authentic relationship. Listen, when you come to Christ, in relation with Christ, we have responsibilities to him. Did you hear me? We have a responsibility to him. And there's no such thing as, you know, well, you know, I've been there a long time. And no, 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 you don't stop working. Yeah. Until we say earth to earth. <laughs> ashes to ashes. And dust to dust. Let me move on. I feel some preaching coming on. And he had no need that any man should testify of man. For he knew what was in man. He knew. He had knowledge of what was in man. He understood man's makeup because he was there when the Trinity head said, let us make man in our image. Scooped him up, formed him, put every part of man in place. And then as man stood there as formed clay and dirt, the Lord said, and man's eyes opened, man's hands raised, 
man's feet moved because he knows the makeup of man. He knows the hairs on your head. Yeah, he knows every part of your body. And since he knows, he need nobody to educate him or inform him about man. Because the one who created man has showed up in the flesh. And because he showed up in the flesh, he knows who wants our future relationship with him and who wants the stuff. I don't no longer want the stuff. I want to be pleased with my service. I don't want the stuff. Because stuff come and go. But as long as the Lord is pleased with what I'm doing for him, the song say only what you do for Christ will last. Because at the end of the day, I will never please any one of you all. Because one day you're saying pastor can preach, and the next day you're saying me ain't no good. But I know there is a God on my side who knows my heart and who knows my being. Is there anybody here want to know that Jesus? Is there anybody here want to be in touch with that Lord? Yeah! But in the text, this is the prelude of what's to come. Because the Jews that are mentioned in the text, I told you the Sanhedrins have a responsibility. And in that Sanhedrin is a mix-up of those Sadducees and Pharisees. But in the text, there is one who's going to show us about a changed heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the prelude of what's to come. Yeah. Okay. In chapter 3, the Bible says that there was a man by the name of Nicodemus. He came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus was, the text said he's a Pharisee. Yeah. The text said he's a ruler of the Jews. Yeah, right. And so with Nicodemus being very scholarly in the law, he understands the law and he's looking at the signs yeah. because his conversation with Jesus is this, for we know no one mm -hmm. can do these signs mm -hmm. right. except they're sent by God. Nicodemus shows us what it's like when your heart has been tapped by the master's hand. Nicodemus' heart was tapped because in chapter 3 he steals away to have a private conversation with Jesus. Because watch this, he has seen the signs. Yeah. But he's no longer is stuck on the signs. Right. He wants to know more right. of what Jesus has to right. offer. Right. Right. And in this, he steals away, has a conversation with Jesus, yeah. and learns about regeneration. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is the second birth. My daddy used to say, the first birth my mama told me about. But the second birth I told my mama about. Right. And here in this text, Nicodemus shows us what it's like to have your heart tapped. Amen. Nicodemus had a heart tap because he saw the signs. Yeah. But he moved beyond the signs to have closer relationship with Jesus Christ. In chapter 3, he's having a conversation. He wants to know about this Christ. He wants to know about this new birth. And I don't want to go too far because that's our next lesson. But I just want to set you up for the next week of what's to come. Because when you look at Nicodemus, you want to see yourself. That you didn't stop at the signs, but that you moved beyond the signs to have a conversation with Jesus. Watch this. In chapter 3, Nicodemus is talking to Jesus, getting further information about who he is and what's to come. Chapter 7, we see Nicodemus defending Jesus, telling his homeboys, listen, we need to at least give him a hearing and we need to hear. But in John chapter 19, verse 39, Nicodemus shows up at the cross bringing the uh, spices to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. He no longer did it by night. He no longer did it in the private. But at the moment, at the cross, he took the Savior's body, anointed it with spice, put a wrap on it, and put it in the grave. That may not mean nothing to you, but that means a lot to me. When you understand who Nicodemus is, and you understand his position, for him to go publicly and get the body of Jesus, take up his own resources, anoint the body of Jesus, show care for the body of Jesus,
Jesus and then put him in the grave. Because when you tear that temple down in three days, he died on Friday. But early on the third day morning, God the grave with all power in his hands. And I just believe that Nicodemus shows us what it's like when your heart has been tapped. Amen. Amen. Well, question is, we see Nicodemus, but where is your heart? The Lord knows your heart. Yes, he does. But what does he know about your heart? What does he know about your heart? And since the Lord knows your heart, wouldn't they want to make you act a little better? Since the Lord knows your heart. That, that would just make me want to pull some stuff together. Because the Lord knows my heart. But I'm glad that the Lord knows my heart. And this is why I'm glad. Because the Lord knows my heart so much that he knew he knew I needed a savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord said, okay, think of lesson, I'm going to talk to you. The Lord knows that I was uh, broke, busted, and disgusted. The Lord knows that uh, I'm my own worst enemy. The Lord knows that I have gotten myself into some situations. Let Lester, the Lord knows that I have got myself in some pickles. Let, let Lester, the Lord knows that I ain't nothing. You go outside, I finish it for you. The, the Lord knows I got some dirt on me. The Lord knows that I have not always said what pleases him. The Lord knows that I have not always done what needs to be done for him because he knows my heart. And because the Lord knew my heart so much, mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to wrap myself in flesh. Right. And I'm going to come down there. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to save that little fool before he hurt himself. Yeah. When you truly know who you are, yeah. then you should truly yeah. confess yeah. that it's been the Lord that's been keeping me. Yeah. Yeah. It's been the Lord that's been sustaining me. Yeah. It's been the Lord that's been holding me up. Yeah. It's not my human wisdom. But because the Lord knows my heart, yeah. he keeps me when I don't even know I'm being kept. Yeah. Because the Lord knows my heart. Yeah. I'm thankful today that the Lord knows everything about me. Yeah. I didn't wake up this morning on my own, right. but because the Lord tapped me right. with his finger of mercy, yeah. I was able to rise this morning. Yeah. Inhale and exhale. Yeah. Because the Lord knows my heart. Yeah. I was able to put my left foot in front of my right foot. And when I got to the shower, I was able to wash myself because the Lord gave me strength. Because there is somebody who's waiting on somebody to wash them up. But the Lord knows my heart. He allowed me to put my shoes on my feet and to put my hat on my head. I didn't put my hat on my feet nor my shoes on my head because the Lord he knows my heart and since he knows my heart I ought to serve him with yeah, everything that I got since he knows my heart since he's been keeping me in the midst of a pandemic I've been in and out of funeral homes all around COVID but the Lord has kept me now I'm giving my testimony now you get yours I'm going to get mine but the Lord has I've been in and out of gas stations and in and out of grocery stores and the Lord has kept me. The Lord has kept me. He has preserved me because the Lord knows my heart. If there's anybody here and you're not too mean and you're not afraid to make your declaration be known, he has kept you when family members have died. He has kept you when money was funny and change was strange. He has kept you when there was only baloney in the refrigerator and a cup of Roman noodles. He has kept you when it was root quiz and all was well. The Lord knows my heart. I hold the battlefield for my
say salvation has come to your house. Amen. We offer Christ to you today. The old preacher say, come by letter Christian experience a candidate for baptism. We offer Christ to you all today. Leave your information in the comment section. Our media um, media director will make sure we get those. We'll contact you. If you're in the sanctuary, come take one of the deacon's hands. We will talk with you. Everybody saved? Okay. Now, everybody on your feet. Everybody on your feet. And for those who are watching, stay with us. For those who are watching and are part of the Prospect Hill family, this is my charge to you all. Church has been through stormy weather. I talked about this the other day. Reverend Reginald Rogers preached that sermon here when we're in the midst of transition. And uh, we've been through stormy weather. But in this transition, the Lord has been good to us. Amen. First of all, I want to thank all of you all who have been consistent in your giving to keep the lights on. Because we had a series numbers of repairs that went on through during this time where we were out this building. Praise God for you. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. Thank all of you all who have been a part of our various studies. Those 9 a.m. meditation calls, God bless you. And again, forgive me on those days I miss, but I do late night study. It wasn't on purpose. Tired. But thank you for those who are a part of the 9 a.m. 12 noon studies, a part of our text talk. God bless you. Amen. The word has gone forth. So what are we going to do different when we come back in these doors? I charge you to be about kingdom building. Amen. I charge you to check yourselves, examine yourselves, search your own hearts, and let the Lord do the work he needs to do on you. When something is wrong with us, we go get checked out, and the doctor tells us what's going on. If there needs to be surgery, there needs to be surgery. Surgery hurts, but it's necessary to correct what's wrong. Amen. And the word, word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Mm. And the word of God is the spiritual surgery we need to fix what's wrong with each and every one of us. Amen. So this experience should have humbled all of us and brought us to a place of humility in Jesus Christ that we serve with all that we have. We do our best to support and serve one another. The church has been blessed during this time, but now it's time for us to be a blessing to the nations. Amen. It's time for us to get outside these doors and do the true work of Matthew 28, 19, and 20. It's already been put in place. We don't have to sit down and have no meetings. The word of God has given us the instructions. Amen. Well, you need to have meetings meeting for what? Amen. The word of God has made it clear Amen. that Prospect Kia will be the Acts 2 model. Acts chapter 2 will be our model of what this church would be like. That church met daily, and we meet what? Daily. Amen. That church grew. And although we're not going from house to house, because I don't want to go to your house, <laughs> it's your job to be the priest in your house Amen. and share that faith in your house. Amen. That's how the church grows. Praise God. Now, do me a favor. I want you to pray up to me. I will. No, come on. <laughs> Say it from your chest. I will, I will be, be better, better in my serving. In my serving. Better, better in my following. In my following. Better, better in my prayer life. In my prayer. I will be better. I will be better in my study. In my study of the Word of God. In the Word of God. I give my life. I give my life to my Master. To my master. So that He can use me. In my service. In my service. By your heads. Lord God, we pray. 
for our church. We pray for the church that will come. That Lord, as we open up these doors, that we will get it right this time. Lord, we've been existing over 90 some years and we thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> for sustaining us. Yeah. But Lord, we want to get right what we have done wrong for years. Yeah. And we're not blaming anybody. But we have seen through scripture that there are some things that we added to the church that you never added. Mm. And we want to make the church just as you have it to be through that of your word. Bless us on this journey. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I already know there are some who are not going to like what's about to happen and what's to come. But Lord, I listen to you and you alone. Yes. Lord, give your servant strength. Right now. Bless these your people that they jump on board. Right now. Follow what you have given us in this vision. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for our leadership. We thank you for our minister of music, yes. percussionists, our deacons, mothers, ushers, choir members, pew members, mission, hope ministry, all of our family, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you. Bless us as we turn this corner. Lord, we know that you're with us. And as we look at the days, as your word is steady revealing that your coming is soon to come. Yes, yes. Lord, we want to be ready. In the name of Jesus, this is our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, get your offerings. Get your offerings. Let's get ready to give. We want to give to those who are watching. Give Lify. Give Lify. Now, don't forget today is third Sunday. Amen. Mission Outreach. Remember, Amen. on third Sunday, we ask each member to give $10 towards our missions outreach. Amen. Okay? We want to make sure that there is funding when we do missions. This is going to be a huge part of our future and how we ministry cost. Amen. We want to be able to do what we need to do. When we do mission, we do mission. The money goes to mission. Amen. Amen. We don't reroute it to nowhere else. We use it for our missions area, food, clothing, whatever else it may be. That's what we use it for. Amen. So please, please give to our mission outreach. That's third Sunday, $10. Today, third Sunday, right? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Deacon Lester, I'm doubling up on mine. If you want to double up, follow your pastor. Deacon Robinson, you going to double up? I'm following my pastor. You going to follow your pastor, Deacon Lester? Okay, any other brother in here want to double up? Shy, you want to double up? Kurt, you going to double up? Yeah. Yeah, Rev. Vincent, you going to double up? All the men double up today for me for our mission outreach. Put my name on there for me, Doc. Thank you. Thank you, men, for being leaders. <laughs> he said, I ain't got no change. <laughs> Come on, Dwight and Brian, y'all double up. All right. Lift your gifts. We give thee, O oh Lord. Give thee, O oh Lord. Our gifts. Our gifts. Receive our gifts. Receive our gifts. Amen. Amen. Give the five cash app. You can use those to give. Let me get my give the five in here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's see here. Okay, go back to your seat. No, don't, don't, don't go nowhere. We good. I mean, go back to your seat. I gotta tell y'all something. Okay, put, put the mission on right here. Ties and offers. C.D. Robinson, D.K. Marshall. Hey, don't, don't, be, don't be getting too close to one another now. Y'all spread out. Don't be called talking and hugging up and stuff. <laughs>
those who are interested in our Green District um, Fall Leadership School, um, the dates are March 15th through the 19th. It will be by Zoom platform. On the table in the hallway, there is a listing of the classes. And get, um, for those who are interested, get the list, see what you want to take. And um, we'll have a sign up form so I can get everybody registered. Um, but um, the classes are good. And um, I'm teaching the Pentateuch. If you have not had that, that's a good class to take. But get somebody else. Y'all hear me all the time. Pick another teacher. Uh, March 15th through the 19th is the date for our district leadership school on a Zoom, on the Zoom platform. So please, again, the listing is out in the hallway. Please get the listing. There are some other lessons out there that I had to teach under the Renaissance Union. You're also welcome to take those extra lessons that I have. All right. Cash app is ringing. All right, praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, Y'all come back next week? Yeah. Okay, come back next week and, and, and uh, we're going to be here. All right, let's stand. Let's stand. Now, do me a favor. And I love you. And I know you love each other. But no hugging. We have a no hugging rule. Fist bump. Fist bump. Did y'all hear me? Fist bump and move on, okay? Now we stand around cluttering and stuff, fist bump, elbow bump and move on, okay? All right, that's our new rule, no hugging. <laughs> I feel bad for the huggers. Yeah. Huggers are going through. <laughs> and the huggers are going through. I don't want to leave, I'll miss y'all. <laughs> All right, let's be in prayer for Tony Huddleston as she prepares to bury her grandmother this Friday at the New Emmanuel Baptist Church. What time is that service? What time is that service, sir? Friday. Invitation 10 11 and service is at 11 o'clock. 10 11 visitation, 11 o'clock service at New Emmanuel Baptist Church. Let's keep Sister Charlotte Foster in our prayers. Her brother, her oldest brother, passed. Brother John Galvin, she's in our prayers. Keep her in your prayers. Amen. 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 If there's any other, please let me know. So I am informed. This is good to see y'all in the room. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's, hey, do me a favor. Receive that benediction. Come on, catch it. You got to receive, open up and receive it. Because this is with the blessing that holds us together until we meet again. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless your going out and your coming in. Henceforth now and forevermore. The Lord bless you, your children, and your children's children. The Lord bless every aspect of your life. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us hence from night forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Peace be with you. All right, listen. Sunday school will remain on the conference call, and then we'll worry about that later on, but for right now, worship is at 1130. Okay? So please come early so you get checked in and get in your spots. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Peace be with you.